So I got a passenger ride. Hello, this is Rodney Bush. This is the middle of March, and we are going live with Revo down in Miami, Florida. Uh, I am in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, if you just got here, uh, I have been with Lyft and Uber driving for years. I quit for a year and a half because of a program that uh, made us some decent money with Snout Partners, our parent company. And I started back in January driving and when we pre-launched Revo Rideshare. We are here tonight to learn about Revo Rideshare, the onboarding. And I'm going to say that uh, you, if you're brand new, uh, we will have some time for questions and answers at the end. Uh, I've been with the company uh, two and a half years with our original company, uh, Snap Delivers, Snap Partners. And we have emerged into several verticals, we call it. And now Revo Rideshare is opening. Uh, I have with me uh, Rhino number one, and I'm Rhino number two. You'll learn a little <laughs> bit about that at some point. But uh, we are, have been appointed as rhinos, and if, if Alex wants to talk about that, he could when he speaks up. But Alex is not only a person that I've uh, grown to really enjoy. He's a great person. He's a great trainer. Uh, he's been with the company owners for a couple of decades uh, as friends and in businesses together. And uh, you'll learn about us. We also want to learn about you. I love uh, learning about people who are in the business with us. So... Um, we're here to learn about Revo and on onboarding. I know we do have some new people for the absolute very first time. Uh, hence, Scott Jones is in the house. Welcome, Scott. And with that said, Alex, uh, I'm going to mute and enjoy the call. As I drive back from Louisville, Kentucky, back to Nashville, which is a little over two hours. Very nice. I was actually, uh, so I was born in Fort Knox, Kentucky, so not not terribly far from where you're at, but uh, I'm out here in the sunny Arizona now. It's a beautiful day out here. So I was actually at a spring training game earlier today. Um, about 10 different uh, baseball teams do string, spring training out here. So always a good time. But welcome, everybody. Uh, if this is your first time uh, hearing me speak, my name is Alex Scar. I'm part of the corporate team over at Snap Partners. Um, I was one of the original co-founders of Snap Delivered. That was our original business where we did the same thing we're doing now. If you're on here for Revel Rides, we are disrupting the rideshare industry and we are a disruptor. So Snap Partners, we're very disruptive. We find different industries that need fixing. We come up with innovative solutions and then we implement them for change. And then all while giving people an opportunity to earn and grow with us. So uh, we did that originally in the delivery space. Um, so if you ever use DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, all those companies, they charge the restaurants 20 to 30% just for them to be on their platform, just to have someone come pick up their food. And my family's come from restaurants for over 30 plus years. It's not the most uh, you know margin effective or you know profitable business to begin with. Uh, running a restaurant is very hard. So when you got someone trying to take 20 to 30%, just for delivery. <clears throat> and this was at the pandemic where most everyone was stuck doing delivery and you couldn't go dine in the restaurant. And they were still kind of choking out the restaurants with that 20, 30%. So that forced the restaurant to raise their prices up to the customers. So now that $10 hamburger at the restaurant's a $14 hamburger at the uh, DoorDash or Grubhub. So um, we wanted to see, you know, do an opportunity to really change the industry. So we came in with a flat rate model. And same thing with Rebo. Uh, it was all word of mouth, uh, word, uh, learn uh, about the company and then go share it with others. And then you can earn some residual income. So we charge a flat rate to the restaurants. We save them tens of thousands of dollars. And then we paid our drivers better than anybody else. And then we had a refer and earn model. So if you brought in a customer to the app, then you got paid every single time they ordered food. If you brought in a driver to the platform, then every single time they delivered food, you would get paid off that transaction. And if you went to your favorite restaurant, uh, and brought them uh, into the system, then you got paid 40 cents out of the $2, but every single time they pushed an order out the door. So very similar model that we have with Revo Ride. So this is our newest project. This is our newest disruptive project that we're doing this time in the rideshare industry. So just like uh, Rodney was saying, he's a rideshare driver. He's been doing it for a very long time. I myself have been a rideshare driver. I have thousands of rides under my belt. Uh, I know what it's like. And when I first got into rideshare, we were making 60 to 70% off of the ride. And you made a lot of money back then. You can work part-time 
uh, whenever you wanted to, day or night, and make some extra money just by driving people around, which I actually enjoyed. I enjoyed the you know the fun, the companies. I have a ton of stories. I'm sure if you've done rideshare before, you probably have some crazy stories. But um, <clears throat> but as the years went by, they kept lowering what the drivers made, and that was the biggest thing. Is actually, let me share my screen. Hold on one second. All right. Hopefully, you guys can see my screen. So what really sucked about the rideshare industry is everything fluctuated all the time. So earning fluctuations, like I said, we were making 60 to 70% when I first got into rideshare. And then now I think they're making closer to 40 to 50%. And that's the biggest complaint of rideshare drivers is now they have to work full-time hours to make part-time income because uh, you have to put a lot of wear and tear on your cars. You're the one putting all the, the mileage and the tires and the gas and the maintenance and dealing with drunk people and throwing up in your car and all of these things, <clears throat> but now you're paying, getting paid less and less and less. So, and then Uber and Lyft, they keep having all these high commission fees. So that's why you make so little is because they have so many fees that they keep in house. And really the only one making out is the ride share company. So, and again, you're putting all the wear and tear and everything else on your car. So these are all issues that we wanted to address and we wanted to fix. If we could have a perfect ride share company, these are the things that we wanted to change and give the power back to the drivers, give the power back to the, the customers. The only thing on this list we can't really do anything about is the unpredictable passengers because <laughs> unfortunately, no matter what rideshare platform you're on, uh, you're always going to have unpredictable, crazy people. So, But everything else uh, we're working on. So there we go. Um, so drivers, if... <clears throat> Uh, so right now our apps are live. So if you go to the app stores, whether it's the Play Store or the Apple Store, you can find our apps. Or if you just go to revoride.com, uh, you're going to see a download for the apps for both the customer and the driver's app. Uh, you can also see videos every Thursday. So tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do an opportunity call for RevoRide. So Paul will jump on a call and then he'll uh, do exactly what I'm doing now and just tell you about the company, what we're trying to do, how we're trying to uh, approach the industry to really make a, a difference. Because a lot of people ask me that when I say, hey, we're doing ride share. They always ask me like, well, you're jumping into the, the ring with a couple of 800 pound gorillas. How do you guys expect to compete? I mean, it's they, they have the market share cornered. How are you guys going to even compete with that? And it's because of our business model. It's because we actually care about our drivers. I mean, at the end of the day, a rideshare company is just a software company and just apps without the drivers. Without the drivers actually using their cars and picking up the people, we're just software. And the unfortunate thing is they lost sight of that and they nickel and dime the drivers. They bring down what they you know make and everything else. Um, and that's what we really want to change. And you know, like I said before, just give that power back to the drivers. So, but there's really two parts of our company. So there's the the program where the drivers make money uh, and then the customer, what they pay, I'm gonna go over that. But then we also have the referral program. So um, the driver normally, like I said, they get 40 to 50% of whatever the ride is. So if you have a hundred dollar ride, a customer orders a car, it's a hundred bucks, that driver's getting 40 to $50 of that. Uh, with us, we give the driver all, so every bit of whatever the gas, the mileage, the time, the tip and everything else, the driver gets all of it minus just $1. That's all that we keep from the driver is just $1. So, uh, and they also get to keep 100% of their tips. We don't touch their tips. Sometimes these other rideshare companies, they even dip into the, the uh, driver's tips and that's very unfair. They're the ones putting all the, the time and effort and they should get 100% of their tip. So, but on top of what the customer pays for gas mileage, time and tip, they also pay either $5 per ride. So on top of all of that, which the driver gets, they pay $5 per ride. So every single time they take a ride, they pay the gas mileage tip in time plus five bucks. So we keep the $5 in house. That's how we pay ourselves. Uh, but that also goes to our residual referral plan. So 60 cents of every dollar that we bring in and we keep. So that $5 in that instance, and then also the $1 that we keep from the driver that goes six, uh, 60 cents of every do dollar that goes back into the residual referral plan. Uh, or the customer, they if they make more than six rides in a month, they might as well get on our freedom pass. It's $30 a month. Uh, and then that way they just pay for the gas mileage time and tip. And then they don't pay the $5. And then 
they can also save about $110 a year if they buy the annual pass. You know, that's 250 bucks for the year. Uh, and then uh, they, you know, basically save the money and then they only pay for the gas mileage and tip. So, but on top of that, so not only are we changing everything for uh, the driver and the customer, because we're going to be cheaper for the customer. The one promise that Paul gave is we're going to be less expensive for the customer and we're going to pay our drivers more than any other company. So uh, the driver, um, they're going to get everything minus the dollar and then you pay the $5 on top of that. But then you have the referral program. So if the customer, um, if you are a customer, you get a referral code. And if you're a driver, you get a referral code. If you're part of a company in any way, you get your own referral codes. And then we encourage you to help us grow. So go invite your friends, your family, strangers off the street. Uh, if you are a rideshare driver, as you're picking up uh, people from other you know, rideshare companies, just tell them about Revo. Um, and it's fantastic for drivers because, you know, most drivers, they multi-app anyways. And if you tell them they're making, you know, everything minus a buck, they're going to be excited and they're going to sign on. It's free. It doesn't cost them anything. And then everyone gets a referral uh, code. So, but our drivers, when I was a driver, I only made money when I was driving. If I ever took a day off, if my car broke down, if I got sick, I didn't make any money that day because I wasn't driving. I was an independent contractor and they weren't going to pay me just to take the day off. It's not the way that it worked. Um, so with our program, we have a residual referral program. So if you are a customer or a driver and you invite another customer, they're going to pay that $5 per ride. And then you're going to get 20% 20, cent, uh, 20 of that or $1. But every single time that customer orders a car from us. So uh, if you get a thousand customers and they all order a car today and they're all paying the $5 per ride, you're earning $1,000 today. And then it's residual every transaction. So again, if they do another ride tomorrow, all 1,000 of them, then you make another $1,000 again tomorrow. Um, and then if they're on the Freedom Pass or if they pay the $30 a month, then you're going to get 20% of that or $6. But every single time uh, they pay their monthly payment, then you're going to get 6 bucks. So if you have 1,000 people and they're all on the uh, monthly plan, then you're making $6,000 a month in residual income or if they pay that $250 annual pass, you get 20% of that or 50 bucks, but every single time they pay that every single year. So you just invite people to a platform that's cheaper. On average, our rides will be between 10 to 15% cheaper uh, than say a Lyft or Uber. So that $100 ride where the uh, driver's making 40 to $50, ours may be $85. Uh, if they do the $5 per ride, we'll keep $5. So there's $80 left over. The driver leaves behind a buck and then they get 79 out of 85 versus 40 to $50 out of 100. So it's better for everybody. It's cheaper for the customer. Uh, the driver makes way more money. And then whoever invited the customer and whoever invited the driver are going to get paid residual referrals. So if you invite a driver to the platform out of that dollar they leave, by, be, leave behind, you're going to get 20% of that or 20 cents, but every single time they do a drive. So if you have 100 drivers and they all do just... 10 rides in a day, that's a thousand rides a day. Uh, and if you get 20 cents per ride, you're making $200 a day. So uh, not bad just for inviting people to a better platform. So, but that's how we're disruptive. That's how we're going to go up against these 800 pound gorillas is because we value our drivers. We value our customers. So we built a better uh, platform. So it's cheaper for the customer. The drivers make way more. And then everyone has an opportunity to earn with us just by referring their friends and family. And some people see the vision like we see the vision and they're going to go out and bring in lots of people. They're going to go market and, you know, actually go put in ads and go and beat the streets and go hand out flyers because the more people they bring on, uh, the larger their residual check and the opportunity is for them. So, but on top of that, one of the most exciting things is everything that we're doing, we're building on the blockchain. And whether you understand blockchain and cryptocurrency, um, just like uh, you know, the other day, Bitcoin had a record high of over $68,000. Um, but blockchain and cryptocurrency isn't going to go anywhere. It's coming like a freight train, whether you like it or not. Um, a lot of things are going to start being based off the blockchain. Walmart, for instance, uses the blockchain. A lot of major companies are starting to go that direction. Um, so we're going to be one of the first rideshare companies that's built on the blockchain. And we will have our own cryptocurrency. Um, and you'll be able to actually earn tokens just by doing transactions. So whether you're a customer taking rides or whether you're a driver giving rides, 
uh, and we'll have some other opportunities for you to earn cryptocurrency uh, through other things like mining opportunities and stuff like that. Um, but our cryptocurrency is actually going to have utility behind it. You can actually do something with it. Most cryptocurrencies out there, um, they're all speculation. You can't really buy your groceries with them or go do anything else. Uh, people just, you know, buy it based off of demand and whether they think it's going to go up or not, uh, just like, you know, Bitcoin and stuff is doing right now. So, but blockchain, um, it decentralizes everything and it creates a ledger. So, which is very good for you guys, because if we are paying you to bring people onto our platform uh, and you bring on thousands and thousands of people, let's say, you're going to want to make sure that one, we're paying you off of every single transaction that happens, just like we say that we're going to. But if since we have everything on the blockchain, uh, everything gets recorded. Everything it has a copy. Everything is secure, transparent. So you can actually pull reports and see every transaction that happens within your organization, which you can anyway right now if you go and uh, bring up your back office. You can see everybody that you refer, and you can see people that they refer down to five levels. Uh, and then you'll be able to see every single transaction as people start taking and giving rides. You will see that uh, and be able to track all of that. So, <clears throat> but even Bill Gates, who was one of the people that took advantage of the internet when the internet first came around, if some of you are old enough, and uh, before internet became mainstream, once it did, a lot of people jumped on, like Bill Gates and uh, Bezos and Musk and a bunch of other people, and they had the whole dot-com era. And a lot of people made a lot of money, millions of dollars uh, during that time. And now they're saying that blockchain is going to be the most important innovation since the internet itself, and it's going to change the way that we think about money, business, the world, and everything. It's going to virtually impact trillions of dollars worth of transactions across multiple, multiple industries. Um, and so we built our whole entire platform on the blockchain just to make sure that we kind of future-proof ourselves. And this is the kind of forward thinking that our leadership has, um, is if it's coming, we might as well jump on board uh, and be one of the leaders and, you know, kind of help bring, uh, bring forth that, especially to the rideshare industry. So, but... 34 million uh, Americans or, you know, U.S. adults across uh, the country, they own cryptocurrency globally over 420 million. So we are going to have our own cryptocurrency that you're going to be able to purchase rides at a discount and ours will actually have utility. So say, for instance, I'm at a restaurant and I need to get a ride home. So I go to Uber. Uh, it's a $50 ride. But then I go to Rebo and it's a $45 ride, let's say. But then it says, hey, if you buy your ride with your token, so uh, whether it's Rev or Revo, we'll figure out the name of the token is going to be, but you can purchase the ride with the tokens and you'll get it for, say, $40. So you save an extra five bucks and it'll walk the customer to order the tokens right through the app. They'll be able to purchase the uh, ride with those tokens. And then we have utility. So if someone's buying the tokens, you're using the tokens on a platform to actually purchase a service, and then everybody's earning tokens uh, whether you're a customer or a driver, every time a transaction happens, you can earn tokens. And then we even have, uh, you know, some mining capabilities and stuff like that. But that's going to bring value to everything that we're doing because we actually have utility behind it. And then our drivers, they can't really purchase their gas and their groceries and stuff with their coins. So then they're probably going to sell it on the open market to someone that's looking for coins. Uh, and then that's what's going to really kind of create the, uh, you know, the buzz and the, and the price and everything else. So... Um, but one of the things I want to draw your attention to right now, we are brand new. If you're coming on board with us, we just launched our first city five days ago, uh, which was Miami, Florida, and we are coming to a city near you fast and furious. So right now we have an opportunity for you to become what we call a founder. Uh, so a founder, it gives you an opportunity to get into a profit sharing pool. So once we become profitable, uh, we're going to take 2% of the net profits and then we're going to split it amongst those people in the pool, whether it's 10 people or 10,000 people. Uh, that's what we're going to split amongst the pool. And right now it's a, a couple hundred billion dollar industry ride share and it's only going to grow. And then because we're also decentralized and on the blockchain and with uh, cryptocurrency, we're going to be able to go worldwide very, very quickly. Um, so we can expand to a lot of different areas. So you have an opportunity to possibly earn a lot of money just through the uh, profit sharing pool. And in order to qualify that, uh, there's two steps. So the first step is you need to get 60 members signed up with your referral code, direct members. It doesn't matter if it's a rider, a driver, 
doesn't matter what the ratio is. I know it says 30, uh, 30 and 30, 30 riders and 30 drivers, but we really don't care what the ratio is. As long as you get 60 people before the 11th, which is this Monday. So midnight, um, I believe Hawaii time on Monday is when they're going to cut that off. So that's step one. So step two is between March 11th of 2024 and March 11th of 2025. Uh, between you and your direct riders and drivers and your direct referrals, you have to give or receive 30 rides in a one-year period. We set the bar very low. It's practically on the floor. Uh, so we're making it very easy to qualify for this. But you do have to get the riders before the 11th. So if you're brand new, if you got some work ahead of you after five days to really get it done. Uh, but it can be done. I, I talked to someone the other day that just came on a couple of days ago and they already have uh, they're 60 and they're, you know, getting ready on their way to, uh, to 80. So very doable. Um, but you just have to go out there and, you know, tell everybody about it. And that's the thing we are now getting to the point where we're going to start launching cities. We just launched Miami. Uh, we are going to be launching the Nashville area, which I'm sure that you guys are super stoked about, uh, very soon, probably within the next, uh, one to two weeks, we're looking at launching other cities. So Nashville is going to be on there. I'm in Phoenix. We're going to be opening up the Phoenix and the Tucson market as well as Las Vegas. But if you're in a city and you want to launch your city, then let us know. So put it in the chat, reach out to Rodney, reach out to myself and let us know that you want to be uh, a builder and work with this <clears throat> work to help open your city. So we call those captains and we do what's called captain's call. So I did a captain's call the other day with Vegas. Uh, I'm doing another captain's call tomorrow with our Arizona team. And then on Friday, we're doing a captain's call with Atlanta. So these aren't just riders and drivers. If you're just a driver or you're just a rider, and maybe you'll invite some people here and there, but you're just more using it for the service and to kind of you know be a part of the change, cool. Then you can come to these type of calls or you can invite people to the opportunity call. Join our Facebook page, join our Telegram, and we'll keep you up to date. And when we launch your city, um, we'll get you all of the information. If you're a driver, we're going to have some driver onboarding classes and stuff like that. But this captain's call, it's for people that are the movers, the shakers, the builders, the ones that actually want to go out and build massive teams and go and help us open cities. Um, it's a great way to make residual income. It could be a massive stream of income if you put in the time and the effort to go and build it. And the beautiful thing about our company is not only do you get credit off of your direct referrals, but we encourage people to go and build teams and go and you know, build a large organization so we actually give you the ability to make money on down to five levels. So if I invite someone and they take a ride, I make the buck. If they invite someone and then that person takes a ride, well, the person above them, they're going to make the buck since they're the direct referral. And then because I brought that individual on, I'm going to make a 50 cent override. So which if you don't have a large network, go and find people that do. Uh, there's a lot of influencers that have large networks. I just talked to a uh, a DJ out here in Arizona. He's a you know pretty big DJ, big, pretty big deal. Uh, he has lots of followers on Instagram and Facebook. He's in all the major clubs, but he heard about what we're doing. Uh, and he's like, I see drunk people all the time that need rides home and they wait for Lyft and Uber for their, uh, you know, for their surges to go down just so they can actually afford a ride home. And I would love to be able to be a part of this and you know spread the word. It's better for the drivers. It's better for the customers. And then if I can make some money too, that would be awesome. And now we're going to start putting together some stuff. And he has, I think, 11,000 followers, uh, followers on just his Instagram. Um, he's got a bunch on TikTok, a bunch of Facebook. But say, for instance, he goes and tells everyone, hey, there's a new ride share company. It's better for the drivers. You're paying the drivers more. So if you're a driver, sign up. And then you can make more money or the customers is going to be less expensive, but everyone has a chance to earn just by referring other people here. Download the app. He uses his referral code, 10,000 of the 11,000 people sign up, let's say, and they all take a ride today and they're all in the $5 per ride. Well, that influencer just made $10,000 because he's making a buck a ride. But if I bought in that influencer and I'm making a 50 cent override, I just made $5,000 on that same exact transaction because everything he brought in, I'm getting an override on. So you want to go find people with the biggest amount of followers and networks and bring them in with you. Sell them the vision. Hopefully they catch it. And then they will go and bring in a ton, a ton of people. So, but you're coming in at a beautiful time. Uh, we're getting ready to launch Fast and Furious over the next couple of weeks. So again, if you're brand new, put what city you're in in the chat. 
So that way we know, um, you know, where you guys are at, and then we can start working with you. If you want to be a captain, then also put in the chat that you want to be part of the captain's call, and then we'll reach out to you just to make sure that uh, you get included in all of that. So but that's a little bit about our company, um, what you guys are getting involved in. Again, we're very disruptive. We want to change the game for the better, for the riders, for the drivers, for everybody, and give you an opportunity to earn and grow with us. Uh, again, we have that whole blockchain black back end as well. So not only can you earn residuals off of inviting people, but then there's also the whole blockchain and crypto piece, which again, if you don't understand it, it you know, I would definitely start doing some research on it. again, it's coming like a freight train, uh, whether you like it or not. But we are getting into quite a few different blockchain technologies uh, to make sure that, you know, we're ahead of the curve. So, um, but that's what I got. Um, so I'll, I'll open it up for some questions if anyone has any questions and then we can uh, start chatting from there. So go ahead and I guess turn your mics on and let me know if you guys got a question. Uh, this is Scott in Nashville. Can anybody hear me? Uh, yep, I hear you loud and clear. I got a question. Uh, I currently do Uber, Uber Black at this moment. And the city has um, regulations or uh, requirements to do Uber Black. If you're Uber X or Uber XL or anything like that, you don't have requirements. So are y'all going to have requirements for the luxury end of uh, Revo? If it is a city requirement, then anytime you have a requirement that's done by the city, like I know I just found out that in Las Vegas, you have to have a certificate to pick up at the airport and you have to have a certificate to be a rideshare driver, period. One I think is like 50 to 70 bucks for the year and the other one costs a little over $200 for a year. But yes, you have to have all of the same uh, you know, requirements because it's required by the state and the, and the county, not necessarily Uber and Lyft. So if it's a requirement for your state and county, then yes, you will have to have it. And we'll make sure that we when we open to your city, we will follow every single uh, rule and regulation to make sure that you know we are on the up and up and we're not getting you guys into trouble or getting ourselves into trouble so right but if you're doing private you don't have to have requirements i i yeah again i don't know the particulars of nashville um, we will mm -hmm. make sure that our legal team and everybody else looks into every county that we open up in because uh, this is going to be a controlled rollout so instead of just opening up all over the place and then trying to figure it out later uh, we're going to, one, make sure that we have a large presence of riders and drivers. Uh, so that way we don't want to have all drivers and no customers because if they're not getting any drives, they're not going to hang out on our app and they'll probably go back to Uber and Lyft. And then vice right. versa, if we have a ton of customers and they are not able to get a driver, then it's really not going to you know help us. They're going to go back to Uber and Lyft. So we want to make sure that you know we follow the rules, we open up, we do everything we can. So we'll research and see what we need to do to open up at the airport. We'll see what we need to do to make sure that we're in compliance with whatever city, state, and uh, local laws there are um, before we open the city, so. Well, like if you're doing Uber Black here in Nashville, you gotta have uh, the license permit, uh, which is bullshit, really. Uh, scoot my yeah. language, but it's it's just the way it is. You have to have the license permit, and then you have to for doing the airport, you have to have an airport tag. Then you also have to have the uh, sticker on the back and the sticker on the front on the windshield. So when you go into the airport, they can, they charge you like four dollars every time you come in to uh, pick somebody up, um, and it's like four dollars each time. So it adds up. And then you get charged for that. But the Uber uh, X, um, uh, they don't have to have re requirements. And what vehicles do you have? Or are you accepting for the luxury um, um, rides for uh, uh, Revo? Yep. No, for because we'll have equivalent uh, categories, just like Uber has their Uber X and Uber XL and their Uber Black and everything else. We're going to mm -hmm. have a similar category to everything. Um, I don't know what the exact requirements are going to be for the uh, our, I don't know what we're calling it, the Revo luxury line. Um, but I'm sure it's going to have to be a newer car. It can't be something that's trashy, just like the black. Yeah. To be right black now I'm driving thing, a, so. a, a Cadillac Escalade. So oh, that's, it's, that's, that's for the Uber black. 
Right. And that would be more than fine. And again, you're making way more money with us because um, that's one of the reasons why people do Uber Black is because they want to make more money and you can charge a premium because you're in a nicer car. You can pick up nicer clientele and hopefully get nicer tips. Um, with us, same thing. You're going to make more money, period. Even on the lowest level, you're again making you know 40 to 50 on the Uber side. You're making everything minus a dollar on our side. But if you have the uh, the luxury equivalent on our side, then, you know, of course you'll probably still get better clientele and people that are going to tip a little bit more. So, but we'll make sure oh. that it's the best experience for everybody on all sides. Do you know what you're going to charge the customer for uh, Uber, uh, not Uber, but, uh, the, uh, the Lux, um, side of, uh, Revo? Um, I don't know the exact numbers. Um, so we're in the process. So James, he's our developer. Um, he's plugging into, uh, an algorithm that's going to be able to mm -hmm. let us know what everyone else is charging and what all the surges are and all of that kind of stuff. And then we can automatically figure out how we can be less expensive. So it's all going to depend on the time of the day and how many drivers are road and all these other things. So usually it's between 58 and 70 cents. I don't know where it's going to land, um, you know, for that particular day and time, but we will make sure again, the drivers make way more money than they're making now and the customers pay less money than they pay with the other guys. So I don't know what the exact numbers are, but that's Paul's promise is you'll make more and the customers will pay less. So, Well, with Uber Black now, as it was of last year, last March, I was making about $700 a day. That was no problem. Now sure. it's Uber is now um, paying us 25% of the ride. We'll be downtown. We'll get a ride for 11 bucks. And it's like, really? I mean, you pay your gas escalade, and escalade. right. And, and it's just not worth it. So right. we'll sk skip the ride and then we get penalized because we didn't take the ride. Right. So it's in yeah, yeah. Uber's treating us like little kids. We're not little kids. We're grown adults and Lyft, Lyft doesn't care. You just, you know, cancel a ride or, or just let it go. And it doesn't count against you like it does Uber, which, right. you know, it is what it is, but they're not, and Lyft doesn't pay much either as well. I mean, you've got to do both to just to be able to survive. And right now we're not even surviving. They're paying us 25%, which back when it all started, we used to get paid 80% of the ride. I know anymore. I was, I was there, I was there and it, and now it, it keeps getting less and less. And that's why um, yeah. Uber and Lyft drivers are going on strike. That's why they're constantly trying to do everything they can form unions and that's perfect timing for us. We are bringing this company to be another option. Right now you have Uber or Lyft or some third-party company you've never heard of, but they probably also don't pay you that well and or don't have that many rides. So with us, we want to give you the best platform as a driver to make the most amount of money. We want to offer a, a program where you can also refer other drivers and other customers because um, in the beginning... We may not have a lot of rides until we start getting some traction in your city. And we're going to start spending some marketing dollars to be able to bring in customers. But as a driver, mm -hmm. if you are coming in as a driver, then go invite everybody you know. Go post on your Facebook and say, hey, I just started working for, with another ride share company. They are helping us make more money. Stop using Lyft and Uber. Help us out and you know, join the revolution. Here's the link. Go and start taking rides. If every driver was to bring on 10 of their friends and we have a thousand drivers and they all bring in 10 of their friends to be customers, we have 10,000 customers in the city. But if every single driver just, if we have a thousand drivers and they all just sit on their hands waiting for a drive to come in and they're used to just, you know, having tons of rides come in like Lyft and Uber, it may not be that way in the beginning. So we are encouraging our drivers and that's why we have these referral programs to right. help us get customers. If you're taking an Uber ride, have them scan the code and sign up to be a a, a Revo uh, customer and say, hey, the next time use Revo. We get paid a lot more. I would appreciate it. Um, and then we are going to have it so the drivers can actually uh, get favorited by customers. So if a customer and a driver, they hit it off and they're like, oh, man, I wish you can drive me every time. You're cool and you have cool music and we both like the same baseball team, whatever it is, then mm -hmm. that customer can be like, cool, I'm going to favorite you. So now if I ever need a ride, because uh, we'll have book rides in advance. So if I need to go to the airport next Tuesday, I can say, okay, you know, Matt's going to give me a ride. He was a cool driver and I'm going to go and try to book a call uh, or drive with Matt. Or even if I'm out and about and at the restaurant and within a certain radius, you know, Matt, the driver is available. It's going to say, hey, Matt is available. Do you want to ping him and see if he can pick you up? 
and then you can you know have Matt come pick you up. So it encourages our drivers to be better customer service. When I was a driver and you get paid very little and you're just grinding it out doing 20 uh, rides a day, it gets to the point where you don't even care and you're just numb to it all. And you're just like, get in, get out, okay, whatever. And you're just on with your day. But if then you you're actually, sitting there for hours for waiting for a run. Exactly. For 11 bucks. But, but imagine if you are a great driver, you have a great car, great customer service, everyone likes you, and you have 50 regular customers that get rides from you all through the week. And now you have planned trips all through the week and you don't have to wait around for the next ride. Now you have rides that people are booking because they like you because it encourages you to then go and be a better driver and, you know, get those favorite customers and favorite drivers and stuff. So that's, that's what cool. Uber and Lyft don't offer. Right. And that's what's going to make us different. You can't require, hey, I want Joe Schmo to, to pick me up. Right. You get whoever you're going to get and you never know who you're going to get. Exactly. So, um, so Atlantic City, South Jersey, Matt, I was using your name. I saw your name. I was using you as the driver. So my bad, but hopefully maybe you are a driver. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, so Atlantic City, are you going to be a uh, captain, Matt, or are you just going to be a driver? What are you, uh, what are you going to get in for Atlantic City, Matt? You're in. Um, can you hear me right? Yep. I haven't decided fully yet right now, but uh, I mean, I guess I'm short on the amount of time to um, to qualify for that. But I would I like the you idea. can. You just gotta you gotta get busted and get going. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I'm definitely I I actually literally just heard about this from uh, I took an Uber the other night from uh from tampa from a driver and he was just saying that that it was just getting launched in miami so i was kind of curious so i i saw it and i googled it you know and i saw the there was a facebook page about it so that's how i found about the link but i'd be curious about it you know as far as the um the profit sharing um is very uh, appealing and you know just like you said the residual income so you're not constantly having to deal with the grind and all the stress of all that so a lot of things you're you're talking about are great and plus just having the continuity of um you know passengers that some of them that you might have as regulars you know we were just talking about it you're like you know you don't take your car to a mechanic to a different mechanic every time you take it to somebody you know and you trust so I think that's part of a big part of this is safety. You know, we've all heard the stories of, you know, people being in feeling unsafe in rides and, and the companies just have been pretty much tone deaf about doing things. So, you know, uh, so I would, I would like to get something, you know, something going if, if it's feasible. Um, so I'll get off of that call then after that. Yeah. Yeah. So reach out. Um, let's set up some time to maybe chat. And if you want to build a team and, you know, start doing some stuff, then we can point you in the right direction and kind of help you out. Again, I want to open sure. up as many cities as possible uh, over the next month and, you know, months ahead. So. So what's the best way to do that? Uh, do you have like, you're going to continue with the weekly call or. Um... Yep. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to do a weekly call and how you market. Again, we give you all the tools and the resources and you kind of do your business how you want to do your business. We build the track, you run the race at your own pace kind of thing. So, but a lot of people on this call, they are very successful in doing, say, like Craigslist ads. And they bring on a lot of people from Craigslist ads. Some of my best people that I have uh, that are builders and have over 120 plus people came from Craigslist. So, um, but a lot of people are also doing, you know, Facebook ads and funnel marketing or just going out and passing out flyers or just like you, you got into an Uber and that Uber driver already knew about it. So he's like, hey, go check out this new company. It's an up and coming company. Just open yeah. your mouth. I went to a, a networking event yesterday and ended up signing up three people. Uh, I did an online networking event to, again today and I signed up another four people um, and it's through Alignable. If you guys aren't on Alignable, um, it's kind of like LinkedIn and Facebook combined. So it's like building your personal br business brand and then networking with other people. Um, and I actually won uh, business, local business person of the year for my area of Phoenix. Um, but all I do is do a, is go out there and talk to people. And that was one of the biggest things is like, you're so passionate about what you do. And I love the innovation and everything else. And 
you know, definitely bring it to Phoenix. But all I do is just talk about it. I'm passionate about it because I believe in it. Drivers need help. They need to have a change. I was a driver and it sucked. And I would been a customer and it sucked. So we have a platform that's going to make it better. And now we just got to go talk about it. It's all word of mouth and we pay you to go open up your mouth. So the bigger sure. your mouth, the more money you're going to make. So maybe some structure about, you know, and giving us some tools that we could use, you know, maybe some links or something set up like, hey, you can use this as an option or something like that might be helpful. Just a, just as a thought. For, yep. For so I'm going to actually set up a marketing call. Um, I've been talking to a few people that are doing uh, like one person has a funnel. Uh, he has a whole thing built and he can duplicate the funnel and you, he, you can buy the funnel from him for you know X amount of dollars. We have other people doing videos where you can have a short TikTok video or video you can post to your Facebook that has your name, your city, your code. It's personalized to you. Um, and he charges between you know $40 for one to $100 for three. Um, if you want to go in different areas and stuff like that, we have a lot of people that are successful at Craigslist. So maybe we'll have some of those people put their Craigslist templates and stuff out there. So at least you guys have some direction in your marketing. So I want to have a marketing call um, that we can bring all our captains in and maybe give someone 15 to 20 minutes to talk about what's working for them. Maybe they can give some links and some other things or do a little tutorial about what they're doing. Um, so that way, people that don't really know anything about marketing, maybe they're new to it. Uh, can get some ideas and go be successful. So I'm I'm working on that as well. Thank you. All right, we got Herb Mason. He's going to be a captain out in uh, in Montana. So and we know Herb. You're going to do good things out there. My boy Ahmed out in Hartford, Connecticut. So I actually found uh, found him um, also on a a Craigslist ad. So I mean, you can you know find people everywhere, and he. How you built building a pretty big team out there, Ahmed? You had what, like 50, 60 people signed up in the first week or so? I don't know if he's who's that question for? Ahmed out in Connecticut. I don't know if he's he's yeah. might be <laughs> muted. So hello, Matt. Hey, hey, what's going on? How are you? Hello, everyone. Good. good. Yeah, we are looking forward to open up in Connecticut soon. Yeah, I've talked to a couple of your builders. So, um, so Ahmed, he he got a couple of people that were excited and they have good networks and they know how to go and build stuff. So he put them on the phone with me. We did a Zoom. Um, he let me kind of have a conversation with them and we all, you know, put our heads together. Now we're going to open up Connecticut. So if you're building a team, set up a call with me. I'll be more than happy to, you know, talk to you guys. Uh, eventually, maybe for the next call, we'll get Paul to jump on with us and he can kind of give us some you know, pointers and tips and stuff too. I was just on the phone with him yesterday uh, talking about launching some cities. So, but for sure, we'll, we'll get Connecticut. We'll get a captain's call going in Connecticut for you, uh, Ahmed, because I want to try to get you guys up and running maybe in the next uh, you know two to four weeks as well. Oh, thank you. So yeah, remind, remind me, shoot me an email tomorrow. Yeah, right? I will. I will. Thank you. Yep. Does anyone else have any questions or some exciting news or anyone else want to be a captain and have some, some input? Well, I want yeah. to introduce Dan Verley. He's on the call here. He's, he's uh, close to being a captain. He's down there in Bozeman rocking it. Where's Bozeman? Uh, Is that Montana? About, yeah, it's in Montana. It's what you talked about last week down there, Yellowstone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah. Just let me know. Let's uh, let's get Montana on the map. And I see Mo. You got your hand up. What's up, buddy? Hey, Alex. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on an Angel Medina's team. Just talked to him today. Fired up. I'm in uh, Northwest Indiana. Okay. <laughs> All right. You build yeah, any so, team out there? I actually, I just signed up today. I just found out about this welcome. today. Well, welcome, man. Angel yeah. and Mo. So, well, um, so you're joining the revolution. The so. So, so what I should do is just start giving my link out, basically. That's the name so, of the game. Because I want to drivers, yeah, drivers yeah, so, and customers. So one of my people, um, she, her name's uh, Valentine. I don't know if she's, I don't think she's on this call. She'll be on our call tomorrow. But she didn't know how where to go get people. And I told her, hey, there's a, here in Arizona, we have a, a cell phone lot at the airport where they have like 70 or 80 drivers just hang out waiting for rides. And she just mm -hmm. goes to the cell phone lot and goes inside. She signed up 17 people today just going to the cell phone lot. 
Um, so drivers are easy. And then she, you know, uh, hits up customers. She talks to anyone that she sees with a Lyft or Uber sticker in her car. If she's out and about. So just start talking to people. That's it. Okay. But sell them yeah, this, on the whole this, thing. This sounds great. Yeah, yeah, sell them on the whole thing. You got to sell them the vision because we're trying to disrupt and we need people to help us disrupt. We're the people's army. And that's the only way you can make change is if you get enough people to, you know, go start disrupting. So tell everyone about it. Let them know. Be like, hey, we're coming soon. And then if you invite all your friends and family every time they take rides, you can make residual income. So start inviting everybody else. And then their drivers make more. So if you know any drivers that are tired of making 40, 50 percent or 25 percent like uh, like he was doing with his Uber Black, um, use this link, sign up and then you'll get your own links and start inviting people and you just go start building your team out. OK, so we're glad to have you aboard, man. A couple of new people here. I like it. Matt, Mo, you guys are all new, but super excited. So good stuff. I have a comment. Yes. Hi, Constance. <laughs> Hi. Um, I have a about over 100 drivers out in San Francisco that are ready to go and impatient, but they have a language barrier because they're mostly speaking Arabic. So I translate a little bit with the guy that um, that I signed. But I try to put him on Zooms and he's getting very frustrated because he can't comprehend what anybody's saying and he really wants a translator. Uh, so if there's anybody in the company that comes up that can speak both languages, they're in dire need out there. Do we have anyone on this call that speaks Arabic? Anybody? Okay, well... I'll keep an eye out, but yeah, you you probably want to find someone um, and tell that guy if he has a decent understanding, maybe he knows someone that might be a little bit easier to comprehend. Someone's a little bit more business focused yeah. and he can put them on his team. So be like, hey, do you know anyone that might be a better, you know, translator or, you know, I don't, I don't even know if they want to say yeah. that. It'll probably be insulting to him, but you know what I mean. I asked them to be on the lookout for somebody that maybe speaks both languages. It's kind of hard just for us to come up with somebody unless somebody joins the company that speaks both languages. Sure. So, right. Like we, he, I think he does translation when he's talking to me back and forth at Messenger, but I put him on a Zoom last night and he got very frustrated and just went off the Zoom because he couldn't comprehend anything. Right. Yeah. Well, you're, we'll just have to find someone on your team that hopefully is a little bit easier with translation. So just keep an eye out or maybe um, maybe put a Facebook ad or a Craigslist ad in uh, in San Francisco, just saying, hey, we're opening up a new rideshare company. We have a large Arabic uh, you know, following and I'm looking for someone that can help translate. Um, there's opportunities to earn residuals. I'll help you build your team, whatever it is. Uh, but just maybe market specifically for an Arabic person. And right. then... Sounds so, good. Yep. I just want to get it out there just in case. No, you always got to ask for sure. Yes. Medina, what is that 2000 for a TLC license? What is that TLC? That's the taxi limousine commission that you have to pay just about 2000 or more. To get the license to be able to do ride share in New York City. Oof. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I met a couple other people in New York City over the last couple of days. Or is that close to where you're at? Because I know you're in Brooklyn, right? Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn. Okay, so a little, little bit of ways. All right. Are we open up Brooklyn soon? Have you talked to Paul or are we uh, going to get your area open up soon as possible? Or do we have to do some hurdles um, like pay these um, fees and stuff? Yeah, I'm waiting to to see, um, you know, what they tell me about like the whole taxi limousine commission situation. I spoke to Evelyn and she said um, to wait for Paul to answer that because she didn't have the answer for me. So it is, I guess, it's a hurdle. Um, but I guess it's not only New York City, right? Like some other guys spoke, they needed a certificate in order to do ride share in his area. Vegas, so I guess, yeah. yeah, Vegas. So I guess, you know, it's not only New York, but in New York, it's like, it's it's real serious. <laughs> they serious with it, so. Yeah, so the states that have heavy taxis and a lot of the taxis when Lyft and Uber first started coming about, they all formed unions to try to do everything they could to, you know, keep a foothold in the, you know, the taxi business, which unfortunately they lost a lot of it. 
But some of those states like New York, who's known for, you know, hailing taxis in the middle of the city, same thing with Chicago and, you know, some parts of California, they're just going to make it a little bit more difficult. And you have to grease the palms and do all that kind of kind of stuff. So we'll figure out what we need to do. But yeah, 2000, that's a lot. So, yeah. All right. Thanks. Yep. Um, Elliot, you're in Baltimore. You want to open before 2026. That's two years. So we should hopefully be open in Baltimore. My sister actually lives uh, in Maryland. So I'm going to try to get her to help open up that area. So if you're in Maryland or, you know, in Baltimore area, we can try to figure out getting that up. And One running. thing I want to tell you, uh, I'm not in Maryland now, but I will be probably before 2026. Uh, where are you now? I'm in New York, but I plan to move down there. I uh, went in two years or less. I don't know. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, anyway, nice one thing. last thing. Yep. One last thing. What category? I don't you know. What category are minivans on? It doesn't say that. I'm not press the wrong. Oh. You know, I don't, I think that would just be like either an XL because you have more passengers. Um, but we're also going to have a service where you're going to be able to do medical trips and stuff like that. If you want to take people by, you know, the hour and. and uh, OK, you know, so XL. So, I understand yeah. XL. Thank you, Alex. Yep. Because it goes off of how many you know riders you can have, whether it's like a you know four seater or, you know, seven seater, whatever. So the. But a van usually seats six to seven. So Mario has a question. What's up, Mario? We got about five minutes. So Mario, you on mute? Kara Squillo? Squillo? Okay, well you know, unmute eventually. Um, so yeah, let's figure out captain's call. So any having a problem unmuting should everyone has the ability to unmute so um and then oh so paul you're asking for the arizona time for the uh, the zoom tomorrow um it's probably going to be around seven o'clock i gotta figure out i got a couple of appointments i'm trying to get squared away but i'm going to try to do it for maybe around seven o'clock okay time. cool are you going to send out an email yep i'll send out a an invite tonight Good deal. Thank you. All right. All right. Yeah, I was able to figure it out, sir. How are you doing? Hey, hey, what's happening? All right. So, yeah, basically I have two questions. Uh, number one is what what are the requirements you guys are looking for to open up in a city? I'm in Orlando. Oh, nice. Orlando. So uh, mm -hmm. I know we have a lot of people in Florida because that's where we're based out of is Florida. Um, mm -hmm. So we just need a lot of riders and drivers. I mean, we are not we don't have necessarily like a certain number like you need, you know, thousands and thousands. As long as we have a good amount of riders and drivers um, within an area, I know Orlando is a little bit big, so we, we don't want to have like all of our drivers within like a 10 mile radius and we have customers spread all over the place. We want to make sure that we have a good amount of riders and drivers all over the place. Um, and then good presence from the Revo side, meaning you guys, captains out in the streets. It's always easiest to open up a city when you have people that live locally that can be your feet on the street and go be your voice in your mouthpiece and go and, you know, set up local stuff. Like I know next week here in Phoenix, um, I want to do a live event uh, either next week or the week after that within the next week or two, I want to do a live event where everyone can kind of meet each other in person. Um, and we can do, just do a little meet and greet and then, you know, plan for the launch. So, but you can do all kinds of stuff uh, depending on, you know, where you're at and, you know, how involved you want to get with, you know, hosting stuff. So. Okay. Sounds great. Uh, the, the second question is, um, I'm a little, uh, I don't completely understand as far as the, the, uh, the packages you have the, the yearly package for the customer, uh, and also the, uh, the monthly package when it comes to you mentioning how uh, a ride is $5 separate from the, the mileage and, and tips and stuff, how does that exactly work? So I can give a better breakdown when it comes to the, uh, the passengers. Sure. So the passenger has three ways to pay. So it's either $5 a ride. So say if the gas mileage tip and time and everything else that we're paying the driver is $80. And then on top of that $80, they're going to pay a $5 per ride fee. So now the whole entire ride is going to be 85 bucks. Uh, we keep $6. So five from his five, which we pay out in the referral program, and then a dollar from the driver. Um, and then the driver is going to get the rest. So if you're doing more than six rides in a month, then you might as well be on our freedom pass. And that's 
$30 a month. Um, and then all you pay for is the gas mileage tip and time. So the driver makes the same exact amount. You just don't pay the five bucks that's included in with your $30 a month subscription. Um, the $250 a year, uh, that if you were to pay $30 a month for, you know, uh, uh, for 12 months, that's 360 bucks for the year, or you can buy our annual pass, which is 250 for the year, which saves you $110 a month. So if you are a you know power user, that's what I call them, a power user for rideshare. And that's what you do. You don't have a car and you take rideshare three, five days a week. Um, then you might as well pay the 250 for the, the year and then save 110 bucks. And then the only thing you pay is the gas mileage tip and time for the driver. And then we keep a dollar out of that. Okay. So when I see the price point, for example, on my ride, uh, I accept the ride. Ride showed me it's $30. Does that mean that the customer is paying $35 or that, that I'm it's receiving? All, it'll all be broken out for you. So it'll show $30 yeah. and then it'll say the driver or the customer is paying $5 and then it'll have a breakdown itemized your gas mileage tip time and everything else. So you'll see everything before you accept the ride uh, and it'll let you know how much you're getting. So got it. All right. I appreciate your time. Yep. No problem. And then let's uh, chat about opening up Orlando. So let's set up some time with me, you and Rodney, and then we'll figure out coming up with a plan to open up Orlando. So Sounds good. I, I know Armando, if I'm not mistaken, is in the area of uh, Orlando and there was a, a team. I was down in Miami uh, yep. for the, uh, for the initial meeting. So I know there's some people already in the area. I just don't know exactly how much. Yeah. Yeah. So I know Armando's down there. Um, he helped with the Miami launch and he's, uh, you know, close to Orlando. I know he goes to Disney World all the time. He's always posting on Facebook. So, um, but yeah, yeah, we will have a, a good team out there. We'll open up sooner than later. So. Sounds good, sir. Thank you again. No problem. Uh, and then we're over time, but I see one more question from Jeff Dorenzo, yep. who I guess just joined. Yeah, I was putting my daughter to bed, so I'm late. <laughs> no worries. So we're recording this, and so we'll make sure that you get the recording, so no big deal. Okay. Um, but yeah, so your question is, uh, can we accept trips in multiple states or are you limited to our registered state? So you will be able to go to other states to do rideshare um, as long as if you go to like Vegas, like if you're here in Arizona and you're doing rideshare here and then you want to go to Vegas, well, you're going to have to go get your rideshare licenses and your certificates and all that yeah stuff, so. kind of like new york city like I, I drive in buffalo new york right now so i could accept trips on uber all across the state but i can't accept trips in new york city because you need a special license or something sure. yep uh now the other thing so i noticed uh because i've been doing uber and lyft seven years i'm a 14k trip driver um and uber will not let me accept trips once i cross state lines so i just went to florida two weeks ago for vacation hoping to take trips going down there while I was down there and coming home. So I wasn't just paying out of pocket. Uber would not let me do that. Lyft allowed me to uh, do that out of state. So with Lyft, I ended up going through like Pennsylvania, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, then Florida. The only state I could not accept a trip in was Kentucky because I guess they got different standards there. Yeah. On the way home, I came up, the South Carolina, Carolina, or North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia route. And one of those states would not allow me to accept a trip on Lyft. I think it was South Carolina, but it might have been one of the Virginias. I can't remember. So of the nine states I went through, two of them would not let me accept trips on Lyft. So I don't know if you guys looked into different state rules and if it's going to be similar or if you guys might be able to figure out how to bypass that so we could kind of accept trips in all 50 sta states, except for areas like Vegas and New York City, which have their own special things. Is this something you guys have looked into yet? Yeah, it's something we're definitely going to look into. Because again, we're only open in Miami and Jupiter right now, and we're going to start expanding like crazy. So as we start expanding, we're going to figure out with our attorneys and lawyer team, and we have all of the people that do, you know, this kind of stuff on a regular basis to kind of guide us through the minefields, if you will, of making sure that we're compliant in all states. And we want to have it so you can go and ride share anywhere. Um, you know, that's, you know, kind of a, a perk about working with, you know, Lyft, but we just have to make sure that we follow all the rules and we don't get ourselves in trouble so but we'll okay. definitely look into it if it's able to be done we want to be able to do it so okay and following up on that question which is right on the same track 
So I'm in New York now, and I was thinking about going down to Florida for spring break, the first week of April. Since I'm registered with you guys in New York, and even though I can't accept trips up here, if I go down to Florida for vacation, will I, as a registered New York owner, be able to take trips the first week of March when I go or April when I go down there? Or you're not sure? Yeah, if you're a customer and you're in a state that we're open, for sure. If you can, you know, order a no, ride as a as a driver. Okay, you mean go to uh, another state and do a drive as a yes. driver? Yeah, if if we're able to, and we again have to just go through. I don't know what it is in Florida if we have any special rules or anything. That's okay. something that's run by Paul because I'm not on the legal and all of the compliance side. That is not my forte. Um, that's you know something that Paul and Evelyn and everyone else is taking care of. So, but we'll find out the answers and we'll definitely make sure that we get them for you. Uh, but if you go to the portal. Um, there's a, spe a spot on there where you can put questions and you can ask those kind of questions so that one, we can start building a FAQ list because um, a lot of these are great questions and they get asked, you know, some people ask the same questions. We want to make sure to have a repository where everyone can go get the answers. So um, if you could, you know, send that in, um, you know, through the support channel and then that way we can catalog it. I right, appreciate that. Yeah, no, for sure. And the beautiful thing is you can do this anywhere. So even if you're, you know, taking a vacation in Florida and you're not driving, but you happen to be talking to people, go sign them up. You can sign up people anywhere in the country, make money off of them. Once we're open and they're able to do drives, you're able to make money off of them. So, and then if you're just coming on and you're a driver, some of the other things that we do within SNAP, um, we are also one of the largest specialty tax firms in the country that deals with tax programs for self-employed individuals or business owners. Um, if you haven't already claimed your funds for the self-employment tax credit, uh, if you were a 1099 or self-employed individual during the pandemic 2020 to 2021, and you got COVID, you took care of someone that got COVID, or if you had children and they had to stay home from either daycare or school because of COVID, you can claim up to 32 grand uh, from these programs. Uh, you're going to lose half of it starting May 17th of this year you're going to lose the ability to go after 2020. So if you haven't already claimed it, that's something else that we do. So whoever brought you on, have them send you the link. We It's free to see if you qualify. So we don't charge you to send in your docs and we'll see if you qualify and for how much. And if you do, um, then it's just a flat fee. We don't charge any backend percentages or anything. It's just a flat fee. Uh, we do CPA stuff and we'll sign off on it and you'll get um, you know, uh, protect, audit protection and a bunch of other stuff. So if you're a rideshare driver, I would go and see if you can qualify for money, but you can also invite other people. So if you're recruiting rideshare drivers, um, you can also get a link to give them for um, the SETC program. And if they go through with it, then you get paid a you know commission anywhere from one to 300 bucks. So um, I have one person they brought in, I think 200 drivers. And out of that, I think they brought in maybe uh, 27 or 28 SETC deals. So we might make, you know, 40, 50 grand in commissions. Um, so not, not a bad deal. Awesome. All right, guys. Hey, this was a great call. Alex, as usual, has done an amazing job. Be aware that tomorrow night at eight o'clock Eastern is the regular Revo meeting. So if you don't have a link, find out how to get that link from your sponsor or somebody, uh, and be there tomorrow night at eight o'clock with Paul is usually going to be there. Uh, any final thoughts or comments, Alex? Um, I think one last question was, uh, do we accept rentals for like Uber and Lyft? Um, as long as they're okay, because I know some of the rental com companies like Hertz and stuff like that, they have a special partnership with Uber. And if you rent a car from them, you could only drive on Uber. You can't even drive for Lyft or anybody else. But they have a lot of third party companies out there or private individuals who have fleets of cars that they rent out to drivers specifically for ride share. So as long as it passes all of the uh, you know, road tests and everything else, and you have the right insurances and whatnot, um, you should be able to use a, a rental car. But we'll have more details on that as we start opening up, you know, more cities. We'll get all the details for that city to keep us in compliance, and then we'll post them everywhere so you guys can do your research. So but that's all I got. Rodney? You all right. Well, yep. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Be sure and save this and bring your new business partners, your independent business owners back next week. And every week, same time, same place. Good to have everybody tonight. Yeah, we'll see yeah. if we can get uh, Paul to come on the call next week. So that way we can uh, 
you know, have his input and hopefully he'll have some more question answers for us since he's the one putting this all together. So, but thanks for your time, uh, random Wednesday and learning about this new business for you new people. Um, I'm excited that you came and joined us at this time. Uh, for you guys that have been around with us for a while, like, you know, Brother Lloyd over there in the top corner and his little captain's hat, you know, we always appreciate you guys. Uh, you know, let's keep grinding, keep, uh, you know, building and let's disrupt this industry together, make a lot of money while we're doing it. So, but God bless. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your night uh, and we'll talk again uh, next week or very soon. If you have any questions, just reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to uh, to set up some time with you. I'll put my... Just Alex at RevoRide.com. Oh, I just did that to Mario specifically. Let me do it for everybody. Hold on. Alex at RevoRide.com. All right, there you go. So just shoot me an email um, or whoever your sponsor is, and we can set up some time. But thanks, everybody. Have a great night. We'll talk soon.